Okay. How's the stream sound to everyone? <laughs> Who has it up, I guess. Why do you want to move your camera this way? Because, like, you can see me in your background. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it sounds very good. Good, good? Yeah. Okay. Sounds fun to me. You're going to want your character. I should print out my notes so I don't have to keep switching between stuff. Well, we have a printer, so... If anyone's watching right now, I don't know, I'm not paying attention, but if anyone's watching, just bear with us a second. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone is watching, make yourself known in the chat. <laughs> right. We've got seven viewers. How many of us are... Seven there? viewers. Wow, that's I'm crazy. On at least one. one, two, three... <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we have four people. Uh, I'm on these two. Five. So there's two people. I like it. Are they just like the uh, Twitch moderators saying if we're going to do something bad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love those guys. <laughs> what do they do? They just make sure you're not doing anything Yeah, illegal? they'll ban you and stuff if yeah. you do stuff that's against their. And Portia is. In that case, we really love them. They're really great. That's true. But keep, yeah, they're awesome. Keep Twitch, keep Twitch good. One of them left looks like we're straight off. Whoa. Are you? It seems like your sound alerts browser source is offline. Make sure you've implemented the source correctly in OBS or refresh the source. I think that was a notification when you had your sound turned off. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I heard my voice. Yeah, that was from someone's stream. Yeah, I think that was my phone. Okay, we are ready to start. Um, thank you, everyone who is either watching this or will watch it in the future for joining us this week on Pincast. Um, this week we're going to be starting out doing a quick refresher of our first session because, because we missed, uh oh, I got a text from someone who's watching it and says they can't see anything. Pause a second. Oh, what? Okay. I can see just You can fine. see it? Like, Everyone who's on can see it? Mm-hmm. We need an extra device. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, I think it might just be him. Me because I don't have a webcam today, so I will just be the mysterious oh. voice in your head. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Uh oh. You don't have twelve words in there. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Makes makes you even. <laughs> Good. By um I'm the voice of the team. group. I'm that <laughs> big one. Group yeah. is gone and twelve thorns will be here shortly. <laughs> is that a threat or If you have to go to the bathroom, you can go to the bathroom. <laughs> and if something go, important happens, then I will play your character for you. That could be fun, actually, to cool. see that. Now 12 Thorns get the big box because I forgot about him. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can just put him on the other yeah, side of there and then put the picture of us in the middle. Nah, if you like. We're good. I'll fix it later. Picture, I'll fix it later. We get to see the kitty cat. Okay. It's a good image to have up for everyone viewing. Okay. Wait, they can see all of us? Yeah, right everyone now? can see everyone right now. Everyone who's on Twitch. Okay, let's start over for, for everyone who's actually watching us. We're getting we're getting used to the streaming thing, so. Okay. Uh, once again, thanks for joining us. Hopefully everything's working now. Um, everyone can hopefully see us without a problem and hear us without a problem. Like I was saying before, we're going to do a quick recap of what happened the first session because the stream was broken. Honestly, I was broken, I guess, and accidentally streamed it without recording it. So none of you got to see it. So we'll do a quick recap. 
and um, do some uh, fun intros for all the characters and all the players, so you guys can watch those. Are you recording them? I am. I am. Yes. And uh, yeah, we've already set that up, so we'll get started with that. Um, we're starting with Twelve Thorns. He's going to be introducing kind of how we do our introductions. We're probably going to do it every single week, too, so go ahead. Okay, I am uh, Michael Honey. I'm playing the character Twelve Thorns, the forgetful tabaxi warlock. Uh, if any of you, any of you have seen the much more popular podcast Dungeons and Daddies, they open each episode with uh, all the players giving a fact about their character. And I figured that we might as well try and leech off some of their popularity and uh, take it for ourselves. So we're going to be doing the same thing. Uh, but if you're getting mad at us for stealing their idea, then uh, get mad at. Wyatt, he's the one that uh, approved this idea. Yes. <laughs> so, my point for this week is Paul Thorns, he has kept a journal for as long as he can remember. And he just, at the end of each day, he writes down what happened during the day, any major events, any people he met. But when he started it, he couldn't remember how to read or write. So, he just drew pictures and he tried to make them uh, representative of what happened throughout the day, but he's really not very good at art, so it's kind of just some stick figures doing whatever you can imagine them doing. Uh, even he's not exactly sure what he drew, but that is my fact for the week. <laughs> for everyone watching, I am Boo Phillips. The fun fact about my guy, super simple, because he's a super simple guy, his pinky claws are twice, oh I'm sorry, I play Koo. <laughs> He is a polar bear kid. <laughs> his pinky claws are twice as long as the rest of his claws. <laughs> uh, Alright, my name is Benjamin Hamilton, and I will be playing the Goliath Paladin Braylor the Wall. Um, my fact about him, he uh, was raised in uh, Ranger Corps, away from his clan. Um, and so he was never uh, with his clan long enough to learn Goliath from them, but there was a centaur ranger who regularly talked with them, and he is the one who taught Braylor his native language. I love it. My turn. Hello, how's it going? The name is Alec Jordan, and I play Teagle. Yes, it's just Teagle. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, the fun fact about Teagle is that he is a rock gnome. And usually these rock gnomes are kind of vivid in a lot of different colors and everything, as most people should know. Uh, but he was naturally born with extremely dark hair. And because he comes from a very proud family, he was actually very embarrassed about this. So he secretly goes and dyes his hair bright pink just to feel like he fits in. And, uh, that's great. Um... I am Amy Ermson, and I will be playing a character named Portia Harris. Um, she is an Earth Genasi, and um, so, you know, kind of, if you don't know what that looks like, she kind of is a, um, like, just kind of humanish, but has different colored features, like gray skin and pink iridescent hair. Um, and a uh, fun fact about Portia is that she just loves potatoes. Any kind of form, um, any kind of, you know, she gets excited about it because she comes from a place where, um, well, well, when we get to that, we'll talk about where she's from and everything, but uh, she comes from a place where there's not really any potatoes, so she gets excited about that, which is random. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, so now... Making mashed potatoes every night. Yeah, <laughs> just keep making mashed potatoes, yeah. French fries, throw everything you can do in there just to... She's just sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, too many man. forms. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. All the characters are great. We're going to have a great time. Um, sadly, everyone missed the first session. It was wonderful. Uh, we all had a great time with it. Um, just a quick recap on it, basically all the players found themselves in uh, torn away from their homes by a mysterious woman that they all had met um, during an individual hook that we all did together. Um, they all ended up 
in the northern parts of Wild Mount, and the lady talked to him about uh, sickness that was going around down there that they had to go and solve. So they made their way to Pale Bank Village, uh, ran into an old woman who got a ride to a cemetery from Braylor, uh, just got held in his arms, who was at the moment actually currently carrying Teagle as well on his shoulders. Um, they followed her to a cemetery where uh, all the townspeople were gathered. And yeah, all the, all the townsfolk were all gathered there, no problem, um, until the party showed up. Then there was a problem. Uh, it got a little bit rambunctious in the back. There was, a, there was some mishaps with a coin that the old lady gave to Baylor, some arguments, some attempted thievery, and uh, it got a little loud and, and kind of interrupted a funeral, which is a pretty intense service. Uh, got, a lot of, got a lot of shrewd looks from all of the townsfolk and eventually got a shout out from Elro, who is the town master. Um, calling out the party on their loud speech to try to get them to quiet down so they can finish up the funeral. Um, after the funeral, they went and talked to Elro. Elro explained that the man they were burying was Ergon. He was the first one they knew was afflicted with this weird curse. And uh, he had, eventually he got blue veins running through his body. He started moving slowly and eventually, in the end, they had to bury him as a ice sculpture. Um, after which, Elro asked if they can start looking around because he's worried other people can get it. So, Braylor, who is a paladin, used his senses to be able to find out. He used uh, detect poisons, right? Detect poison and disease. Yeah, detect poison and disease to find out if there's anything else. He spotted a family of four two parents, two daughters, and called them out. Elro asked to keep it quiet, but um, he thought he might be able to help, valiantly thought he might be able to help them and get rid of the disease early. So he talked to them, he told them they were sick, and tried to heal them to no avail, and they ended up leaving without being convinced that everything will be fine, depressed and expecting death soon. They wandered away. Elro once again chastised the group for causing trouble in his town, even though they just barely arrived. Um, yeah. He spoke primarily to Portia because Portia is actually um, a citizen of Pale Bank Village and asked her to have the group maybe settle down a little bit so they can uh, help a little bit more in the town instead of hurting. And. Uh, eventually asked them to go and speak to some people around town to try to figure out what's going on. As payment, um, he offered to maybe cure some of the wounds that they've caused the town already. Um, forgive a little bit of the, the sins, he said, that way they've, they've played against the town. So we left the group split already, um, surprisingly early in the campaign. <laughs> we uh, had Teagle uh, wander off looking for a tavern. Uh, Coog went off to Ergon's cabin to look for some clues, try to figure out what's going on, get a head start, and then Portia, Braylor, and Twelve Thorns all headed off to Portia's uncle ha uncle's house to see how he's doing. Um, they found out when they entered that he was starting to show signs of having this sickness spread through him as well. That's how far we got in our last session. Today, we're gonna to start up the night. Um, we'll start with Teagle, actually, and your tavern. Uh, so it's not really that difficult for you to find a tavern. A lot of the townsfolk will happily point you to the Jolly Dwarf. They all visit it um, daily. And, uh, oh. Oh. still saying stuff right now. And, um, yeah, so they can point you to it without a problem. You make your way there. It's maybe like a five, ten minute walk from the graveyard. As you approach the inn, a really not jolly dwarf um, is currently escorting a homeless looking man out the front door 
Uh, he throws him off into the dirt and yells out at him, "You're looking for, you're looking for charity. Go back to the charity shelter, please. Please don't be, come, don't come looking around here." And he walks back in, the homeless man wandering off down the street. Fantastic. How far away is this uh, homeless man? Uh, he's probably not that far. He probably might have looked at you, but then just started wandering off. He's five, ten feet away. That's all. Okay. I think, uh, I think Teagle might, like, whistle at him. Not like a wolf whistle. Don't okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, it's like a regular whistle, and probably just flick him a, a gold piece. Oh, and wow. And then head into the tavern. Yeah, he's super grateful. Um, as in, he grabs the gold piece and takes off running. That's how he shows gratitude. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, as you go into the tavern, you start looking around, uh, the dwarf's back behind the bar. He's serving a couple patrons, everyone in there. Uh, there isn't many people. You guys are probably getting kind of close to afternoon. Um, not quite evening when people will be showing up. Everyone is in there looks pretty somber and they're kind of sulking after the funeral. They're just drinking a little bit in small groups. No one's really talking, no one's really doing anything. Um, and yeah, you're free to do as you please. Um, well, you probably see one group who's probably not, not as somber as the rest. They're all drinking, having a slightly good time. They're probably trying to keep a little bit quiet just out of respect for everyone else, but they definitely don't seem as annoyed. But All right. Good for them. Um, how far away are they from, like, the main tavern, Unjolly Dwarf guy? The, uh, the group, they'd probably be sitting in a back table as far as they could get from everyone else just because they don't want to interrupt their sulking. All right. Good. <laughs> Could I, I think, yeah, I think Teague will probably kind of come close to them enough to try and hear what they're saying, but kind of keep passing on to head toward, uh, toward Mr. Unjolly over there. Okay. Um, if you're going to swerve like that, it's going to be a, f a fairly odd swerve. So you've probably got like the tavern entrance and then you have right after the entrance is where the bar is. They're like sitting back in the back far corner so you can like swerve around the entire exterior of the bar and you could probably hear what they're saying if you want to that might as well okay Teagle's little he likes to yeah um so yeah as you approach you 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 just hear some light laughter they're kind of joking around talking about time at sea you gather they're probably they're a group of sailors um the sea the man in the middle is probably their captain and then everyone else around is just Probably some of the main crew that are just drinking, having a good time while they're probably at port here in Pale Brink. Perfect. Perfect. That's all I needed to know. All right. So, can I approach Mr. Unjolly Dwarf at the main tavern? Yeah, area, definitely. The bar, whatever you want to call it. You approach, he. <laughs> nah, he's, uh, he's definitely lived past his prime by now. <laughs> Yeah. Old 403 year old guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd um, you'd approach. He'd see you coming, and he'd uh, he'd wait for you to get a little bit closer. I don't know if you'd address him before you get to the bar or not. If you don't, he'd wait until you get like to the bar, um, and then he'd kind of jokingly know that he sees you. He'd like kind of lean over the bar and kind of look down on you like you're like you're hidden behind the bar a little bit, even though you know he can probably see you. And he's like, ain't, ain't seen you around here. How can I help you out? Well, uh, I'm, I'm new in town, looking for uh, a specific disease, is what I heard. Do you have anything about that? Oh. Uh, I ain't heard, I ain't heard nothing more than uh, than poor Ergon's funeral. Nothing's been going on around here. That's all I know about it. Would Teagle know or have noticed that like uh, the people that are infected kind of look bluish and or kind of sluggish? 
Um, I think Elro would have described it a bit about or Ergon's symptoms. So yeah, you'd, you'd be able to tell if you saw the blue veins and stuff. You guys all have a pretty good understanding of what the disease does now, just from Elro's description. Okay. Then uh, Teagle's going to say, have you, have you seen anyone come in here with uh, a blue hue to them? A slowish nature. Well, most people around here are pretty slow, but uh, ain't seen nothing out of the ordinary. All right, well, all right. Give me one of your strongest. Okay. And he gets behind the bar and uh, serves you up a tall glass of ale. I ain't got nothing more than this, but. It'll uh, it'll really put some hair in your chest, and hands it to you. Slams it down on the on the table. A little bit of the ale flying out of the top of it, and uh, yeah. And then if you don't ask him anything else, you just walk on down the bar to some other patrons. All right. Well, Teagle's just gonna start sipping out his ale and paying attention to the room. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Coog. You are currently wandering off towards Ergon's cabin. Last time you tried speaking to a lot of the townsfolk, no one on Wild Mountain has ever seen Bearkin before, so they are all very cold towards you or extremely curious. Um, but they always tend to keep a distance. Eventually, you found a young boy that you were able to pay a gold coin to point you in the direction of Ergon's cabin. Um, yeah, that one's probably a good 30-minute walk from town to get to where Ergon is. It's a, it's a ways out there. When you approach, um, you see the cabin. It's a small one-story cabin, uh, dark on the inside. There isn't really much light pouring in um, with it getting... Yeah, it's more in the afternoon, so it's well lit from just the sunlight. And you watch around, and you notice that there is one... Um, guard standing out, a woman standing at the front door with a spear dressed in just some chain armor. Um, doesn't look super high quality either, just seems like one of the one of the guards around town that you've been seeing. That's all I've seen so far. Yeah. yeah, there's not much there's not much outside of Ergon's cabin. Okay. I'm just going to I'd like to do an uh, investigation check just to make sure I can't do anything else or can't see anything else that is important around the cabin. Just focus on the cabin and like another in the vicinity of it as well. Or on the outside? Can I just... Yeah, um, I might actually have you make a nature check for the outside of the cabin. Okay. Uh, I have a nature plus one a roll. Okay, did you roll that and you can roll 20? I did, but it did not work for some reason. Oh, okay. I see why. I got 18. 18, okay, yeah. Um, so the first thing that happens as you approach, um, the guard will get pretty nervous. You're getting a little bit close to the camp, big polar bear, um, and she'll look at you and say, what are you doing here? <laughs> just like she, she, like, like she's nervous and she says, "What are you doing?" Yeah, so she's. You get a feeling like she, as you're watching her, as you're approaching, um, before she spots you, you kind of, you kind of get a feel where she would be a little bit more aggressive when she talks to someone about approaching, but she definitely seems really surprised and off put by you so it's it's coming out as less intimidating and more kind of like what is going on here what in the world cool. yeah so i'm just gonna like kind of like raise hands like hey it's cool mean no harm here and then ask like why are people guarding a recently dead person's cabin well elro elro put me here um he was saying that uh, some adventures going to be coming around to look around. Um, 
check to see if they can find any clues about some kind of disease that Ergon had. I don't know much about it, but that's all he told me to do. So, unless you're one of those adventurers, which by the looks of you, I might venture a guess you are, um, I'll need you to leave. <laughs> don't worry. What? What's... Does he have something against adventurers? I'm here oh. to just see. I'm here to see my friend. <laughs> no, yeah, he's... So she would have... She got the instructions to only let the adventurers through. No one else would have been allowed. Only let the adventurers yeah. through? Oh, I... <laughs> Did I do that? Oh, <laughs> I think I might have said it wrong. <laughs> um, so she didn't get names. She just said that someone came to send word to her that uh, that some adventurers that Elro had hired in a way were coming to look around. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Elro. So Elro Ergon is the cabin. Elro, he's the town master that you guys spoke to. He was the officiate at the funeral, all that. So that's the town master told her to stand guard and make sure that no one gets there except for adventurers. Except for adventurers. Okay. Yeah. Then, because I'm one of those adventurers, I'm going to say yes. I am one of those people. Uh, three of my, a uh, few of my companions went one way. Another one of my companions, I loves the drink, so he's at your <laughs> tavern right now. I just wanted to come and. See if I can figure anything out. Okay, so she she look a little bit um, hesitant and maybe questioning. Say, okay, um, feel free to look around then. But I am keeping an eye on you. And she kind of backs away a tiny bit, but she does keep watching you as you walk around the cabin. Um, with an 18 nature check, walking around the cabin, um, you can notice there's... A lot of footprints, uh, most of them seem in the vicinity of the cabin, like they're wandering around looking for stuff around the cabin, um, but you do see one set of footprints that seems to wander off into the woods a couple times, um, and then there's one that it leads off into the woods and you can just, you lose it eventually as it goes off, I'm not sure where to keep following it, of course, but just looking out into the woods, it just keeps going. So. Well, I'm just going to make a little mark on the ground next to those footprints. Okay. And I'm also going to, I want to go inside and check out inside the cabin, see if there's anything I can find. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you can walk into the cabin. Um, make a investigation check. Okay. Um, I got to check my investigation with that. I'm okay. pretty sure. Plus one. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see what you get. 20! Not a natural, but I got a 20. An unnatural 20. Nice. Unnatural. Okay, yeah, so you walk into the cabin. Um, the first thing you notice is that it is in complete disarray. Someone's been in there tearing things apart. Shelves are flipped over, beds are broken, chairs smashed. Um, papers are just everywhere in the room. Nothing is where it's supposed to be. Um, so as you start looking around with a 20, you start digging through some of the papers, uh, just in case you see anything, you would find, um, a receipt for some, for a, uh, shop called Pelk's Curiosities. It's just a place in town that people go to shop some random stuff. Not many people visit it, so you wouldn't really know too much from just walking around. You probably didn't, you probably might have spotted it. Um, on your way to Ergon's, but just not taking notice. And the receipt just lists a couple of items that were sold there, um, like some jeweled daggers, some potions, scrolls, stuff like that, that Ergon would have found in Easel Cross in his explorations. Um, other than that, you, would, you wouldn't find too much lying around. It seems like it's been pretty ransacked, and if there was anything valuable, was it was taken. <laughs> What was that store, the receipt for? Uh, Pelk's Curiosities. Pelk's? Yeah. P-E-L-C-S. Pelk's. Found a receipt for there. Okay. And that's kind of it. Just yeah. Everything's pretty busted up. 
Um, you might find some pieces of like adventuring gear and stuff from from uh, Ergon. It's all made for a dwarf, not gonna really fit a bear. So <laughs> you might just toss that aside or guard it to, to sell to someone or give to someone at a later date. But uh, at the moment, that's that's basically all that you find. Just doing a quick glance just around the entire room. Um, real quick, while you are continuing to look around, we will jump over to the rest of the party. Braylor, Twelve Thorns, and Portia. You guys are in Portia's uncle's house. His name is Heinrich Harris. And you have now just discovered that he is showing signs of this strange sickness going around. His hands are starting to get the just visual blue veins starting to inch up his forearms. So I believe that, Brailler, you made a medicine check last time and we decided that he he's not really showing too much of the symptoms, so you would assume that he's just starting to feel the, the effects of the disease. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the last thing he did was invite you guys to dinner. He was going to serve up some more plates because he was only expecting Portia. Um, yeah, so oh. I'm in the house and I'm going and helping um, my uncle lower the things uh, from mm -hmm. the cupboards and bringing them to the Denny room. Um, I'm obviously very, very sad. I know you can't see. <laughs> I'm so sad. Um, she, He's the only family that um, I have and so um, like, uh, my eyes are just filled with tears and I don't really know what to do with all these emotions because I've never had to show any emotions or anything like that. And, uh, so I continue and help, um, ask him, um, if he was in contact with any of, um, uh, is it Ergon? Ergon, yeah. Er Ergon's, uh, stuff. Like if Ergon... Like yeah. Before Portia goes away, I'm going to kind of, like, Bray Lord, he's about eight feet tall, so he's already, like, crouched into this house. <laughs> yeah. Made for, like, human-sized people. But he's going to just crouch down even more and get to Portia's level and be like, you have to be careful. We do not know how this sickness will spread. Oh, right, right. He's right. That is so, true. Be wary about that. Um, I know he is your family. Um, thank you, um, Braylor. I, I'll keep that in mind. I'm, I'm just very sad, and I, um, I can't, I can't think straightly right now. I'm, I'm very nervous about what's going on. Um, we'll make sure to, make sure everything is clean and ready to go, and we won't uh, get sick. Um, Braylor's gonna pull out the special coin that he got from this last uh, um, the last week that we did this um, and he's going to hand it to Portia and he's gonna say keep this on your person um, if we can trust our little gnome friend then this will be very valuable for you to have um, I hesitantly take the coin but I want to make sure like, like I don't want to touch the actual coin because I like of what's going on or from where we got it. So I uh, just hesitantly grab like a little piece of cloth or something from the kitchen and just grab the coin and wrap it up and tie it up in a little bit and I'll put it in my sack. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, quick question for the three of you there. Um, would any of you tell Heinrich that he is sick or would you try to keep that to yourselves? Baylor has learned his lesson. He's not <laughs> saying anything for now. Um, I don't know yet. I think um, I know. I think my character knows that he's sick, but um, she's never had to break any bad news to anyone, so yeah. she's kind of just in shock still. So, kind of processing. So I don't mm -hmm. think she'd say anything just yet. Uh. Well, Thorns isn't saying anything. He doesn't want to cause a stir, but as yeah. soon as he noticed that the guy was sick, he did pull out a handkerchief and tied it around his snout. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just a jury rigging a mask. Yeah. Also, preventing him from talking. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, with that, I would say, um, with all of the hesitation, Porsche kind of tearing up, Braylor, uh, I, I would, I would imagine kind of being a little bit awkward and kind of torn between telling and not telling, kind of just not talking and with the obvious pulling out of a mask to cover the face. Um, he's, he gets a little bit curious. Um, he looks at all of you and then he asks you, Portia, um, what, what is wrong? Uncle, we are strange people from a strange land. Do not mind our customs. <laughs> okay, roll a roll a perception check for me. Come on. Persuasion. <laughs> Persuasion. Persuasion. Yeah. Bye -bye. Come on. Do better this time, Braver. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, nine total. Nine total. Okay. Like last time. <laughs> um. Just about the same. So he looks at you for a second, stares, kind of just, yes, st strange lands, I, I'm not familiar with your custom, so that does, that does make some sense. Portia, is this, is this true? Is this all that's going on? Um, um, yes. <laughs> Definitely. No. <laughs> make, make, make a persuasion. Come on, I'm do it. That was not convincing. <laughs> you can actually, you can have advantage because he rolled so badly against Braylor that that will that will help you. So you can have advantage on your persuasion. Does anyone watching? I'm I'm still kind of a noob at this, so <laughs> I like. Look okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I got seven, so eight. <laughs> eight. Uh, did you roll advantage? You could roll twice. Oh, you roll twice. Yes. Okay, roll great, twice. great, great. Get the better one. Okay, fourteen. Fourteen. It's better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So he <laughs> looks at you for a second, blank stare kind of measures you up and down like he looks at everything. Um, he's a tinkerer and he always analyzes things staring at them and, and you get the feeling like he's definitely analyzing you thoroughly right now um, <laughs> to try to figure out what's going on. And he just looks at you, pauses. Uh, okay, if, if that is all it is. He doesn't seem completely convinced, but he's not going to dig any further. He's, he's just going to Gonna continue on. He's like, uh, so why, why, why have you all come here then, Portia? Why? Who are your new friends? Um, say? these are some fellow travelers that have been traveling. <laughs> For a long time, yeah, um, traveling. you know, I'm just gonna tell him this crazy woman abducted me pretty much, and then. She told me that she needed help with something, and then she told us that there was an issue or something, and these guys are here, and um, I brought them into town. Much Strange <laughs> circumstances. Um, it's a pleasure to meet both of you. Uh, I have not introduced myself. My name is Heinrich Harris. I am Porsche's uncle. I've, I've been raising her most of her life. Um, it's nice to meet you. Who might you be? How do you know my Porsche? Uh, like she said, we met about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um, but my name is Braylor the Wall. You can call me. Or just Braylor. Okay. Or Wall. Wall. <laughs> um, I will say right now that at this point, I'm so sorry. I'm not good at like saying that my um, Portia is just so sad and she's like you can see her eyes start to swell up and they're very red and they start getting a little puffy. Um, there's no weeping or anything yet but just like super red and super stressed out. Um, and uh, she looks she's trying to hide her face from her uncle. Okay. Um, then he is currently distracted with the eight-foot man, 
And then he looks to the cat man who's walked in as well. And and you, same story with them. You just showed up and can't talk. <laughs> wandered. Uh, Tolthorn starts trying to talk, but then remembers that he's tied his mouth shut. <laughs> so he hurries and undoes that. <laughs> looks over at the now weeping woman, and, or almost weeping woman, and he's a little bit worried that she also is kind of sick. <laughs> he decides to chance it. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Tolthorn, so I'm also with this uh, wonderful pair of uh, totally normal individuals. Have we met? <laughs> Us? No, no, I've never, I've never seen you before. There aren't many tabaxi that come up this way. Um, I know of you from your kind what from stories of the Savalier Woodnoma. Nothing more. In any case, I'm uh, sorry for all of the nastiness going around your village. I hope that we can do something about it before it uh, befalls anyone else. And uh, he's pointedly trying not to make eye contact. Nas nastiness? Well, I'm, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. It, well, uh, Portia at this point, is there is tears and you hear <laughs> this little weeping noise of... Are you staying in the room? Um, yeah, I'm going to okay. stay in the room because I'm just kind of solid oh. stiff. I don't know what I cannot touch and what not touch, and so she's just kind of... Okay. With that, um, he... Is definitely going to dig further with uh, the cat man that he just met. Still doesn't know names, telling him that there's something happening in the village and they hope they can solve it before it gets further. Makes him a little bit worried. And then Portia starts crying. He's, he's on to you guys. Um, Braylor's just going to hold like the bridge of his nose and <laughs> to his hands. This is not going the way he wanted it to. Yeah. So he'll, he'll look directly at, well, not instantly. He'll probably stare at you for a while, Twelve Thorns. Look back at Braylor with his hand on his nose, and then stare straight into Portia's puffy red, tear-filled eyes and just stern look. Portia, tell me what's going on. Uncle, you're sick. You're oh sick. You have the same thing that Aragorn had or whatever. <laughs> I can't even talk right now. Or... I just, just, just I'm just so sad. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the second you say that he's sick with what Ergon has, he knows what Ergon had. Um, he knows, he heard what's been going on, and he, he'll ask you all to leave. Um, he doesn't want you to be around him anymore um, when that happened for your own safety. Um, so he'll kind of usher you out politely staying a good distance from each of you just in case um, he'll stand back and kind of just you all should not be here you know where the door is please leave uncle I can't leave you here by yourself and Le have you die he'll cut you off and just leave Portia <laughs> I, I can't have you get sick too if this is something that I can spread to you I cannot have it happen um, and your traveling friends I would I would never be able to forgive myself in the afterlife if they catch what I have as well. And then he just tells you guys to leave and walks back into a back room where his tinkering workshop is. You would know that mm -hmm. portion. Uh, yes. Well, that well, this is going great. Oh my gosh, this is the worst. So sad. Uh, Let's go investigate that man's cabin. I think we can meet up with our bear friend. Okay. Yeah. As Tolthorn and Braylor pretty much said the same thing, as soon as they both finished saying it, at the same looks time. over and smiles at him and is like pointing between them like, <laughs> connection. Yes, little one. Um, yeah, I think at this point, Portia's trying to pull herself together, and um, she feels like I feel really determined to figure out what's going on and how she can, what she can do to. Um, heal her uncle. So. Okay. So you guys all head off towards. Walk uh, over. Yeah. I'm gonna try and talk to Portia and be like, "We will find the cure for your uncle." Okay. Or I will die trying. Ooh. And then he's just gonna keep walking. Well, I really hope you're not failing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can. I would also 
also like to help uh, cure him, but I might take wounding. I don't know if I'd go so far. <laughs> Well, that is all right. I do not expect you to die in the face of protecting. But that was the oath I took when leaving my home, and so far I've done none of that. <laughs> yeah, somberly. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys, you guys make your way that way. Um, you didn't get good directions from Elro, but anyone would talk to any of you guys. They see Goliaths frequently, um, Tabaxi, on and off, and then they all know Portia. So they could they could tell you where Ergon's cabin is. Portia, you might know where it is. I know where um, it is. So you guys are going to head that way. At you this did. time, Teagle, you have definitely finished your first, if not second and third. I don't know if you would go that far or not, but... He's a little man. He can't handle his alcohol. Okay. So maybe, maybe half a pint? <laughs> Yeah, so you've gotten that all finished, and you are in a bar, uh, in a tavern, my bad, tavern, um, just studying everyone. People have left, people have come in. Uh, there have been a couple more instances where the not-so-jolly owner of Jolly, the Jolly Dwarf Tavern has had to throw some people out. Um, just bums coming in to ask for food and stuff. He doesn't really like them very much, so... He's thrown him out a couple times. You've watched it. People have always the same mood, the somber. The uh, sailors still kind of maybe slowing down a little bit in the corner. Not much else going on. Well, I think at this point, since uh, Teagle's probably a little bit yeah. over Bud, um, he's going to be like, all right. He's going to slam his mug down. He's going to walk over to this group of like sailors. He's going to go up and be like, do you guys know about the disease in this town or not? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you approach the group. First, they all go a little bit quiet when they hear you at first, staring at you. Um, all the lackeys, you would say, standing on the outside, kind of just bar your way, gruff looks, kind of just like glaring at you, wondering why is this guy interrupting our... Our meeting, one of them probably gets nervous and says, Why don't you just scully on out of here, eh? And kind of puts his back between you and the rest of the group. Um, and they are very cold towards letting you be in there. Uh, I think I still have my cross stick. Down. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're going to pull that out and stick it right on the guy that just showed his back. Oh, okay. Um, so he jumps out. I am serious. Yeah, he jumped. He jumps a bit with that little jolt. That's that a little screech you wouldn't expect to come from a hardened <laughs> sailor. And uh, let's out a little ah, kind of little little. And then he kind of like clears his throat. <clears throat> I mean, what do you think you're doing, huh? I told you to get out of here. And he reaches for a cutlass on the table and just starts towards you. Um, but then you hear in the background a um, man's voice, Well, now, I don't think we want to be too too hard on these newcomers. Um, come on through, let him talk to me. And the guy stares at you. He's just, he is really upset at you. Like, he's got, he's got murder in his eyes almost. And he stands there, hesita hesitates. And then sets the cutlass back down and moves out of your way. Well, you're lucky the captain wants to talk to you. I was just like kind of ignore him and just walk straight past. Okay. So yeah, you walk over, um, and yeah, you see the same guys before. He has a huge hat. He's like, if you can think of a pirate captain, he's a pirate captain. He's got a huge hat, um, big old feather in it. If not three or four, he's got badges all over it, sorts of seashells and stuff. Um, he's an elven man, long, kind of teal hair going down far behind his back, and then just a, a buccaneer's mustache and goatee, like you would expect on a standard buccaneer. 
Um, I'm and yeah. Make a personal request that you yes. get that man's hat because <laughs> we need it. It is vital for all. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he sees her approaching, and he says, "Yes, you. What about this disease that you were talking of?" So, most of the people here, as you can see, are a little uh, on the sad slash shy end, right? Yes. There's been a death. Yeah. There has been a death. There are death is because of a disease that I am here to help stop. He stares at you for a second. Um, just trying to... He looks you up and down. A disease, you say? Um, what's, what sort of disease might it be? As far as I know. This disease starts to affect you and you start to slow down until you fully freeze. Hmm. Have you guys heard of this along any of your other travels? There's nothing that we've heard like this. Nothing that would cause a man to freeze solid. Are they um, blind? It's strange. It's not something that I've seen in any of my travels, no. Um, do you know anything about how it affects people, how it is transmitted between between one host and the other? I do not. And that's why I'm here. I'm looking around for any kind of leads, anything that might help me figure this out. And I feel as sailors, you guys might be able to hear some of the rumors or gossip around the areas that you're at. Um, he would... Just look at you, shake his head. No, no, we don't. We haven't heard much. We take port in this town far and few between. We don't, we don't make port here very often. Um, but if you hear anything about how it is transmitted or any, any other news on this, I would love to know. Um, one piece of information I may have for you. We were at Pelks here in town, uh, kind of restocking some supplies for our boat and she did seem slightly off when she was gathering our things. We've been here many times and she is generally quite quick to get what we need but this time it was strange. She was moving quite quite slowly. I had a couple of complaints from the crew members when I when I began yelling at them for getting back so slow that they told me that it was her fault. So you may want to check out her see if she's alright but that's all that I've heard about it. Thank you. That is very helpful. Yes, I do I would expect to help in guys. return. Um, if you hear anything, come to me and tell me. I need to know these yes. things. And in the meantime, you guys should probably avoid some of the locals for a little while. Oh, yes. I'm, I believe we're going to be spending most of the rest of our time here on our boat. And then he, yeah, looks at the crew, tells them all to get up, and they start headed out. Hey, uh, before you go. Yes. How much for your hat? <laughs> <laughs> he chuckles. <laughs> this is not for sale, young gnome. And he calls you young, knowing that you look kind of old. Um, he still believes you to be fairly young. Um... And continues, this hat has been with me for well, well longer than any, any, any quantity of coin would be able to separate us. And then he keeps I'm walking. Rocket. I'm getting that hat. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I try and see if I happen to know uh, what kind of person he is or thing that he is? What? So you, you would recognize him as an elf, an elven man. Um, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you would know that he okay. could he could easily be older than you without really showing it. So. All right. Well, if they're taking off, then I think I'll probably take off as well and head for what is it, Picadellos? Pucks, yes, Picadellos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. So yeah, you head out the tavern, and you would probably. That's. Trying to do timing stuff, but you'd 
You'd probably, as you head towards Pelks, it's on the other side of town, you would probably cross paths with the remainder of the party. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how long you would be drinking for after. How long does it take for you to get through half a half a pint? <laughs> Knowing him, it would probably take maybe half an hour just for half a pint. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys are probably, you're probably running into it. You're, like, you're probably crossing the square heading in the other direction, and then they, they kind of, they would probably see you from, from down the road a little bit, heading that way. Uh, no, you'd be heading, so they would be heading, if you come out of the tavern, they are probably heading more east, and you are probably heading kind of a northwest-ish. Gotcha. So you're you're almost yeah. going opposite yeah. directions. Do you just say to Baylor, 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 uh, yeah, I would, I would accept, but I am going to go see this, uh, one lead that I happen to find. Hmm. Cool. Brother's gonna nod, and then he's just gonna say, um, "The coin is in um, Portia's hands now. I haven't told her exactly what it does, uh, but just so you know." He, I think Teagle's gonna look over at Portia and kind of like examine her up and down, kind of like her uncle did. Yeah. Um, the tinkerer stare. And then kind of just nod at Baylor and be like. Good choice. Yeah. And then he's gonna walk off. What the heck? <laughs> okay. So yeah, you guys are separating again. Um, almost heading in opposite directions. Any changes to the party here, or do you all want to go your separate ways? Um, right now I'm still kind of you know sad, but washing off tears and sniffling away, and so. Okay. Um, and I look up and I'm kind of following just the Goliath because. He's kind of the easiest thing to see. <laughs> Out of my yeah. puffed up eyes. And, um, you know, that's all pretty much I'm focusing. I'm just going to keep following and try to get to, um, to, uh, you know, I might hit in or stumble on Teagle a little bit because I might not be able to see him as I walk around. Um, but I want to head up the same direction I was heading, whichever way okay. the towards Erdogan's. Baylor's going. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, does Braylor see anything on the way to the cabin? Um, on the way to the cabin, not really. There's just people walking around. Um, not much going on in the city. Most people probably went back to their homes or a little bit early. It's probably getting pretty close to evening now, though. About uh, thirty seconds after we part with. Eagle, Twelve Thorns is gonna stop and look back and kind of think for a minute. And I'm, I'm going to go with the, the even smaller one. I <laughs> I feel like he might need the help. Okay. Good choice. Think back we will day. meet back. Okay. I just take off trying to catch up to Eagle. Okay. Yeah. yeah so. Um, I'm really slow, it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, once, once I do catch up with him, uh, yeah. since I am a cat man, I'm going to kind of ignore the fact that I ran to get over here, kind of pretend that like it's just a coincidence that I'm going along. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just doing my thing. You're, you're just along for the ride, too. So, uh, I wasn't gonna nice. Eagle's just kind of giving you a side glance. <laughs> he kind of just shrugs and keeps going. Okay. So you guys make your way to Puck's Curiosities. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a really... It's probably like a... 
two this one's a two-story cabin a bit more fancy in design than the rest of them um and then it's got a really ornate sign hanging out the front of it it's a it's a dragon um kind of curling around the outside of the sign above a little above a sword um and right underneath it it says pex that's it um and as you enter you hear light shuffling um and a woman yell out, I'll just be a second. And then you see her shuffle around the corner. Um, and yeah, this lady, she's got veins bulging up her arms, her neck onto her face. And it's just a vibrant blue you've never seen before. Um, and then we are going to jump over to the other half of the party while we wait for her to shuffle over the front of the counter. Um, you guys don't really have anything going on on your way to the cabin either. After a little bit, you get there. Um, Coog, you probably had a good hour there by yourself. Is there anything else you wanted to look around, like specific spots um, of the cabin before they got there? Sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, were you? Were, would there be any? You had like an. You had like an hour there by yourself. So is there any any spots you want to be looking around? Um, any more specific locations you want to search a bit more thoroughly? Or do you want to just do another check around the entire? No, I would probably spend about a half hour in the cabin itself. So. Oh okay. Uh, is it just like one big room, kind of like a studio? Or yeah. Um, kitchen, there's a bedroom there. No, one big room. There's probably like a small half divider um, towards the back just to kind of cover where his bed would be. But that's I gotcha. it. So I didn't find anything else in the cabin with my investigation check and everything. Um, yeah, so if you have another like 30 minutes looking around, you are, you could probably find a couple more smaller items. Um, you. You would probably pick up a little bit more on, on some tracks, wet, wet footprints around some windows that you would have seen were broken. Um, the latches were broken off of in. And you'd see some wet footprints on some of the papers lying around. Um, oh, uh, what do those footprints, like, is there any chance they still look wet or are they they're clearly dried? They, they're fairly dry by now but you definitely it's definitely they've stepped on it there's some muddy footprints there and, um, so they're fairly dry by now yes I'm assuming this is within the last it's probably within the last hour yeah because um, if it's cold here things aren't going to dry out that fast but yeah uh, so yeah after that half hour I would have I would have gone back to that mark that I fit, that I made on the ground and followed those tracks okay um so I'm going to remain I'm going to definitely do this stealthily. Okay. I uh I am a trained bounty hunter, so I know that you need to be careful in situations like this and I do have nature's plus one, my stealth is plus two, so Okay, okay. yeah, so you have no problem finding the mark you made. Um, you know exactly what it is. Head out through the woods, making sure not to step on any loose branches or anything um, really stealthy-like. But as you start, the woman who said she'd keep an eye on you definitely kept an eye on you. Um, she yells out, Where are you going? <laughs> Where is she at now compared to me in the cabin? She's probably still towards the front. She'd like just walk around to the side um, and just like look around the corner, just staring at you walking off into the woods. You could probably see like half of her body sticking out around the cabin, the corner of the cabin. All right, so that happened. So now I'm gonna go straight up to her and be like, "Yeah, um, just investigated the whole area here, and now I'm on this one set of footprints that's obviously didn't come back." So. I want to see where that goes and who it is. Okay. 
Um, I cannot stop you. Um, if you find anything, please let me know, or just go straight to Elro. Um, we would be very interested to figure out what is going on. I noticed those footprints myself, but I do not feel comfortable walking out into the woods by myself. I'm not, 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 not the most well-trained. Um, but if you are willing, I... I ask her, okay, you wouldn't do this, so what do you suggest, then? Um, I'm just going to stay guarding here. <laughs> If, Why are you keeping track of me and nobody else? Well, there's there's no one else around. <laughs> Is this the point where we start walking up to the cabin? Um, if Coog was only looking for 30 minutes, he would have had an hour there by himself, so oh, yeah. it would have been a while still. Okay. Um, she would say that if you are walking out of the woods and you, you insist on it, that she would accompany you. But she definitely wouldn't go I'd by herself. I'd like to ask her, like, what does she, she suggest doing? Would, did she, would she want to wait here? Or should we continue off and see what else we can do? Me, I'm not an investigator myself, but um, if you are leaving, I will follow you if you want to search that way just to make sure nothing bad happens to you. Um, but I would prefer it if I can just stand guard. Uh, you can do as you please. I, I will follow you. <laughs> Basically, she's just waiting. If you leave, she'll follow you if you invite her. If you want to leave by yourself, you can tell her. Um, Actually, I'm going to ask her when she got here. I have been here most of the day. Most of the day? Yes. Okay. I it's, did not notice you when I got here, so you're a good hider. Oh, so this is the lady that uh, talked to you right at the beginning. Oh, I thought you were talking about the, the lady that... So this is the guard. Yes, this is the guard. Sorry, yeah. I thought you were saying that this was the lady that brought us here. Oh, no. Oh. No, yeah, this is the... This is the guard that was standing that, that kind of talked to you at the very beginning. She's... Sorry for the confusion. My mistake. So I said, yeah, you just stay here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow these tracks for a few minutes and see if I find anything. So I'm going to continue off remaining stealthy and see if I find anybody at the end of these tracks or where they might lead. Okay, yeah. So you'd hear off in the distance. Um, she's yelling up to you, okay, so just come back if you find anything. And just kind of, she goes back to watching the hut. She might stand there. If you look back, she's kind of staring at you a little bit more as you're watching, but not a ton. Um, and then, yeah, so you've got, you've got like a good 30, 40 minutes. You're trekking through mountains. You're trekking through snow. Um, it's kind of leading, it would be almost parallel to the town. Um, so you're going now, he's up east. You're probably going north. You're probably going north, parallel to the town. Um, 40 minutes, and you get to a... This guy's tavern was east of the, or west of the town, correct? Um, east. No, I'm not I think. Far. Wait. Oh, no, you'd be heading south. My bad. He's east and you're heading south. So... Okay, so everyone else is headed to the cabin. I'm yeah. headed from my, uh, from my west side, and I'm headed south now. Yeah. And it takes about 40 minutes, 50 minutes-ish, um, and you come out into a clearing a bit deeper into the woods than the last cabin you're at, but it is similar in design. This one, though, um, is lit like Christmas. You're probably getting there. It's closer to evening. The sun's starting to go down, and this thing is just glowing with light. Uh, there's a huge thing of smoke coming out of the chimney. The snow around it is even starting to melt because of heat that's coming out of it. Um, is this thing on fire? No, it's not on fire. It's just got a lot of heat on the inside. <laughs> so at this point, with what I, with what my character would know, Boog is thinking somebody in that cabin is sick and they're trying to remain, trying to keep themselves uh, alive. Yeah. And so they might be, might have been sick for a while. Oh, he's 
uh, what's on the ground? Is it snow or is it mud or is it? Uh, it's snow. Everything. It's thick, thick layer of snow. Um, the snow around the cabin, like the windows and the door, you, that's where some of the snow is starting to melt away. But everywhere else, it's just thick snow. Kind of debating whether I should sneak up and tom it, or if I should just go knock on the door. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go knock on the door. Okay. Um. Yeah. No answer. <laughs> no answer at all. Nothing. No. Nope. You hear? You probably hear some shuffling. But it doesn't sound like human shuffling. It's like pause. Pause? Okay. Yeah. I definitely want to check the check a window. Okay. All the windows are shuttered and locked. <laughs> okay. Um. Is there, the whole rest of the group. No, I can't even. I can't even say. I shouldn't even play a game like that. But <laughs> I'm just gonna head back. You're gonna head back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'll make good time. I'm not gonna bother being quiet this time. I'm gonna get back. Okay, yeah. So as you're just wandering around the outside of the cabin, you just hear that, you just hear that same shuffling, kind of just an animal. It definitely sounds like paws. You know what paws are? You have paws. So you kind of know that that's what it sounds like um, as you wander away. Yeah. So those, those paws, they kind of just, as you're wandering around the cabin, though, they do kind of just follow you a little bit. And then, yeah, you find all the windows locked, the doors locked. No one wants to answer when you knock on the door the first time. And, yeah, you can start headed back. Um, if you, you guys, at this point, when you get back, now, Baylor and Portia, you guys would have had a good 30 minutes. You'd, you'd probably have a good 30, 40 minutes there by yourselves, too, if you wanted to get there. So when you guys get there, the guard, once again, uh, more more adventures, I, I presume. Uh, some have called me that before. I'm not very used to the term now, but... Hmm. Who did we talk... Who are we talking to? The guard outside of Ergon's cabin. Is it a man or a woman? A woman. Do I know her? You would have seen her around. She's one of the glass knives, part of the part of the guards of the the town. Okay. You probably don't know her by name. They generally stick to themselves pretty much. Not uh, super friendly, but Okay. And um Okay, so I Okay, sorry. <laughs> I have to think of what the person would say. Guard, what are you doing here? Well, I'm guarding. Well, yeah, but why? Obviously, this cabin. Uh, Elro asked me to watch it um, and make sure that no one tampers with anything while we wait for a proper investigation to be done. By adventures, uh, your friend who showed up earlier, the bear, gave me a real fright him. And now you two, I assume, are part of that same crew. We are. Um, is he still here? He is not. He wandered off into the woods. I don't know what he was doing. What? He's, he followed some tracks at the back. They let off. And I offered to go with him, but he he was adamant. Um, okay, well, uh, I think that's strange. And uh, he went off in the woods, but I assume it's because um, maybe he just needed to go. So, I, uh, I ask if we can enter the cabin. Can we enter the cabin? Yes. Um, the bear spent a good 30 minutes looking around. Uh, he seemed to not find much, but you are free to search if you would like. Um, the only command I had was to make sure that you don't, you don't wreck anything. But there isn't much to reckon there. I've seen it already, and it's a, it's a mess. But yeah, she'll stand out of the way and let you guys go in if you want to. Brylor's gonna stay outside with her for now. Okay. Um, he wants to talk to her. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Sorry. Um, right. No, go ahead. Okay. 
So Braylor, um, he's just going to um, try and ask her, like, how long she's been, like, working with the town leader, like, trying to talk to her first before he starts asking her questions. Um, okay. Yeah, so she's... She doesn't open up too much. She's not that type of person, but she'll she'll just kind of answer your questions with just one one word answers. Like you say, how long have you been working with us? She'd just say two years. You ask her anything about her day, she's just good. I'm fine. Kind of cold. Not much. Not much to say. It's kind of like someone who's been standing around for half a day at a cabin with nothing else going on. She's probably she's a little bit a little bit upset, but. Um, Braylor is, he's gonna say, I've been training for most of my life to recognize sickness and to, um, try and do my best to heal it. Um, this seems to be something more arcane in origin than a natural sickness. Um, none of my remedies have worked. Um, is there any information you have on that front? Ooh. The source. <laughs> With that, she would, she would get a little curious for a second there, um, and then she would wonder. Are there more people who are sick? Last I heard, it was only Ergon. Did you try casting stuff on a dead man, or is this spreading? He's just gonna go silent and not really <laughs> answer her, and he's like, I have done my work uh, I have recognized that this is a sickness not isolated but that is as far as I can tell for now okay with that she's she just gets upset again great <sighs> I don't get paid anything to just work here standing guarding and now I gotta worry about getting this thing that he had too <sighs> mm. she gets real upset as kind of just Braylor's gonna try and calm her down. Um, he's gonna bring out like a piece of <laughs> uh, like jerky or something that he's been carrying around. And he's like, "You probably are hungry, standing out here in the cold all day." Like this. Do you have so a Snickers work. bar? She. <laughs> she'll I'm take it. Everyone's gonna love it. She's. Yeah, she she takes it, but she doesn't eat it. She kind of pockets it, and she's like, I've got my rations, and uh, mm. I've been standing all day, but not anymore. And she just kind of walks off. I got a word or two for Elro when I get back to town. And she starts wandering off towards the town. Oh, my so goodness. So you're saying you haven't heard anything is what I, I get from that. Not till now. And she just uh, keeps walking. Great. This is good. If anyone else shows up while you're here, make sure that they don't ruin anything. I've, I've got to go speak to Elro. And then wanders. She's now left. And you guys are left alone. Uh, I look at Baylor and I kind of roll my eyes at him. <laughs> and I'm like, we're, we're, we're not in a good spot here. <laughs> I say we take a quick look inside this cabin and then go find um, Kook. Kook, yes. Kook. Sorry, I don't, I barely know him. Okay. <laughs> so you guys have anything specific in the cabin? Same thing when you walk in, it's just torn to pieces. Um, everything's thrown around the room. And uh, yeah, there's... Uh, Braylor spent a lot of time around like animals, especially mountain animals. Yeah. Would he recognize any, like, if this was like a human thing or if it was a beast? Uh, yeah, so with that, I'll have you roll nature, just in case. Low DC, obviously, because you have had experience, but, you know, maybe you're upset about all the things that have happened since you got here, so. Any chance I could do survival instead of nature? Um, or is that stretching it too far? That's... That's a little too far. I'd, I'd say it's definitely nature, looking for the animal... Come on. 14? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, you're looking around. Um, you don't see any claw marks. There isn't any scuffs on the floor from what would be um, animals running around. 
and it seems like there was deliberate um, destruction in certain parts like bookshelves and chests. Someone was there, someone was looking for something. He's, uh, Braylor's gonna relate that to Portia. Okay. Okay. So now I know? Yes. Okay, um, then, um, and then I'm gonna look around as well and see if I, do I notice anything? Have I been in this house before? Um, no. You've probably not been to Erdogan's. He's He keeps pretty, pretty much to himself. Doesn't really invite anyone over. Okay. Um, do I notice thing, like I notice there's a mess? Yes, definitely notice there's a mess. Everything's torn, torn apart. Um, right. Um, do I see anything of importance? Can I run an investigation check? Yeah, so roll an investigation. Um, as she's doing that, yeah. uh, Brailler's going to say, uh, no. this was obviously done by uh, knowing hand. Someone was looking for something. This makes me think the sickness is caused by an artifact or something that was in his possession. Okay. Um, you don't find anything, Portia. You look around, shuffle through papers, flip over some beds, nothing. I flip over a bed? Well, yeah, it's broken. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, Braylor, I believe we should go and find our bear friend. Yes. He okay. may know something we do not. Okay. So you guys are going to walk out, look around for tracks and stuff? Yeah, I'm also kind of worried. Um, so I'm talking to Baylor. I'm also kind of concerned of our... Our little friends, mm. our kitty yes. and our little buddy. <laughs> yes, I I trust the gnome. The kitty and the little buddy. That's what they are. Um, okay. Awesome. They okay. they think they're okay. So yeah. Okay. And so, how can we find? Do we track? We need to track the bear down. Yes. So you guys can both roll. Um, for this, you can do survival. I'd say looking for footprints okay. counts as something survival. So Amy, you cool. can roll a nature or survival check as well. Okay. Um, fifteen. Okay. Is it this one? Um. Yeah. So you can. Come on. You go on out, and yeah, they're not too hard to find. You find some tracks. You see tracks all over the place, but there's one set of tracks that you notice a strange mark next to um, that isn't definitely not made by animals. It was something deliberately put there as well. Um, and you would assume those would be the tracks you want to follow. Okay. Yes. So yeah. I think he found something. So if you guys head that way, um, you guys would probably be in the cabin for like 15 minutes maybe. So yeah. you probably got 20, 20 minutes and 20, 20, 30 minutes and then you guys run into each other halfway down the path. Should um, I run? If you're running, less I'm time running. than that. Dang it. 15 yeah. minutes uh, max. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. I was, I was making good time back Cut the time in half. Okay. Still so you'd be running too? If you're running as well, not stealthing like you did to get there, then you would probably get back to the cabin about the same time they're leaving to get to you. So you're not too far from the cabin when you run into them. Okay. What is it that you found, friend? Ah. So I followed these tracks because they the ones that didn't seem to lead back to the cabin. But about know, half hour's walk up this way, there's another cabin that seems to be on fire, but it's not burning. What? <laughs> a is fire? Or it is hot all around the cabin. And it is so hot, it's melt the snow all around it. <laughs> I knocked on the door, and nothing, nobody asked. 
answer, but there was there was a scurry of like animal paws. My assumption is somebody in this cabin has this sickness and is trying to stay warm. Mm. I think they may have been looking for something in this house and found it. Um, okay, so what do we do now? Do we go to the cabin or do we go um, find our, I don't know, where they went? Where did they go? Because <laughs> I, I was so upset. And I don't so know if you asked them or not. They went to an antique shop. Do we want to go to the antique shop or should we go and stop this cabin that's on fire? Is it actually on fire? It wasn't burning. Like I said, it wasn't burning, okay. but it was hot. Somebody is cooking in there. <laughs> Do you think they're still alive? Oh, I, but here at this cabin, though, I did find a receipt for things from a place called Pelk's Curiosities. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, you guys wanted to go investigate there and ask the owner. If they knew anything about our recently deceased. I say we go and find... I'm I'm concerned about whoever's in that cabin. I don't know who might yes. be in there, and I'm worried that it's someone I might know. Um, I would think, now that I'm thinking about it, Elro did mention the one other person that... He knew probably had this disease was Tolgi Lutan. She generally keeps and lives far from the town, keeps to herself, doesn't talk to a lot of people. Um, so I would think at this point, I sh you you probably would have recognized it at that point. You you might have it might have crossed your mind. Um, if I tell her specifically, like, hey, this is the direct person I traveled. This is where it would be compared to us in the town. She would, she would know that that's them. So she would know that they live. That's that's way further out than most people would live from town. So it would, it would make sense to all you guys if you talked about it for a little bit. You'd all probably come to realize this is probably this is probably that lady that Elro was talking about. We may yet be able to save another life. Let's hurry back. And Braylor's going to start going towards the other cabin. Okay. So yeah, you guys can start heading that way. Um, we'll jump back over to the kitten and the small person is what <laughs> is as as we've had someone describe them as so so lovingly. In this so show. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys. When you're in the shop, she comes around the corner. She is just these vibrant blue bulging veins everywhere arms legs neck they're starting to inch towards even her eyes and such and she's she is like inching along she's since you've entered the shop you can walk around and she's still not even made it close to the front counter she's she is real bad <laughs> She's definitely like even her the way she's talking. It's slow. It's she can barely get out her words almost, um, and she just seems real worried. And when you when you mention that, she's it's like hits her. She's like this is this is bad. Did you know of the man that recently passed? I did. At this point, she's like, st st things are starting to break up. She's not saying everything. You get like ideas now. She's trying to like kind of just get out things as fast as she can. Oh my gosh, she's going to die. She's just, I, yes. 
bought things and that's about that's about it and then she's she's just still trying to wander to the front of the store but not very quickly i think uh i think teagle's gonna kind of glance over at 12 thorns at this point and see if he decides to do anything uh 12 thorns is looking like he don't he really does not want to be here he doesn't <laughs> want to catch what she's got but he also feels really bad so he's gonna go over and like put his arm around her like try to lead her to a chair somewhere oh my okay. goodness it's it's all right let's sit down and uh we, we can talk some more okay so yeah the way you you've led people plays before kind kind heart you've you've helped people get places who aren't kind of people and, and it's usually like a here i'll take your weight we can walk normal speed but with her you like almost fall over when you like get her arm up on your shoulder you start trying to walk and it's just it's not like she can't physically move it's like her bodies are lo- her limbs are locking up they're like it is impossible for her to move faster than that even with you trying to pull her along you're still moving an inch every 30 seconds or so it's oh, well, real slow you, we don't have to hurry up we can go at your own pace uh, I, <laughs> I, uh, I love a cloak and kind of put it around her shoulders warms up a bit yeah and she's she's with that um with you touching like actually being next to her and feeling her she's you can feel that she is shaking um quite a bit the cloak she thanks you with just a soft like but not much comes out she's trying to talk but not much is coming out and she keeps trying to wander over the direction you were pulling her previously towards a bench yeah i'm gonna keep walking with her and then look over at teagle um, why are we here again? I just wanted to get away from the crying woman. What what's going on here? <laughs> uh, I believe this woman knows uh, a little bit more about our problem, or at least something else that gives us a clue of what's going on. Tolfarn uh, looks at the woman. I think we should ask quickly. I I doubt we're going to have uh, much time for interrogation. I agree. Teagle's looking to walk back up and be like, you said uh, this man bought things. Can you tell us what or show us or point at it or just allude to it? Um, anything with that she would slur out the words him no I bought and then she would kind of like start turning her head towards the front she's she's an unintelligent woman you can gather slightly from the way she does that she she starts turning her head towards the front of where she was walking before to the front desk, but while her head's turning that way, her shoulders start to barely creep towards where she came from originally, which seems very strange to the both of you, as most people look with their head and shoulders, or just their head, so. And then she just says, there, and that's it. Frozen? No, she's not. She's not quite frozen. <laughs> she's very, she's very close. Uh, call over twelve horns to her, kind of just talk quietly, and just be like, "So, I'm getting uh, some mixed signals here. Uh, what do you think's happening?" <laughs> well, like I said before, I don't know why we're here. Um, He bought something here, or she bought something from him. I'm. I don't know what's going on either. I'm just kind of not having a good time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. uh, I think I do. I think I need to go and walk.
wash off because I wore a bit too brief. Alright, I, I, I think I saw a bat in the crowd. Like I said, so, uh, you go wash off and when you're done with that, you can come back and actually help. <laughs> was kind of embarrassed. It was mostly just a complaint because that's all it can think to do. No, I hmm. I'll, I'll stay. We'll figure this out. Um, Here, do me a favor. Yes. You go check the front desk to see if there's anything different or weird and I will go check the back where she came from. Oh. Uh, I'm on it. Uh, Twelve Thorns looks very relieved to have someone else coming up with a plan. He is not comfortable planning things. <laughs> so he kind of head over to the front desk and see if I can find, like, a ledger or any sort of documents or anything. Yeah, so you get to the front desk, um, and you just you start looking around, just... And uh, I'll have you roll a quick... Investigation, um, probably not going to be too difficult, but just because you are looking for it, and it's definitely not going to be out in the open where you can find it, so. Uh, 18. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you, you take a second, um, you shuffle around some items on the top of the desk, then realize they probably wouldn't keep a ledger here of things they purchased. And you look underneath the desk, and you start shuffling through some papers, and you do find um, a list that lists things that she sold and one that lists things that she's purchased. The purchase doesn't have much on it. Um, she probably bought something today, just maybe some some strange knives and stuff that someone brought in, but then she does have listed ergon, and she has listed on it a strange vial, ornate dagger, um, trinkets from Isilcross. I look at those things and am picturing in my head what nefarious deeds one might do with a mysterious vial and a dagger. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he, he goes, I, I, I found something, uh, I swear this place is cursed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not good for anything, really. On um, where he will, yeah, walk over. Like he probably didn't fully get to the back. I don't know. Is there like a door or something that was kind of in his way? It would have just been like a curtain. Ow. They don't. They, she wouldn't have had a door up, door up there. Just like a sh kind of curtain that's hanging in the middle. And okay. Kind of fancy design on the fabric. And maybe he would just barely pass something like that. So he just kind of like peeks back over. And then he sees that he's holding something. So he'll probably start walking back a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, he bought uh, a strange dagger, a vial of something or other, and some trinkets from, uh, what was the place called? Isilcross. From Isilcross. <laughs> uh, you, you're a gnome. Do you know anything about trinkets? I don't, don't need to profile, but... I mean, <laughs> to see it first before I can give you an answer. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, I'll look over. So, could I start uh, walking back toward the back to see if I can find these specific items that, that are listed? Yeah. Um, you... It's not too hard to spot them. The ornate dagger she had, like probably sitting up on the table, one of the one of the main display items that she wants to get sold. It's a fairly nice looking dagger, jeweled hilt. Um, looks pretty sharp if you test it out, it can easily pass the paper test that they do with knives. I'm not super big with knives, so I'm 100% sure what that is. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a fairly nice dagger. Um, trinkets, there's a lot of things that you would, you would consider trinkets lying around um, just up in the front. As you get to the back, um, you open it up and it's just one big room, has her bed in the middle, 
There's a chest at the base of the bed. There isn't any items lying around. Um, just a normal room. Wardrobes, chests. Not too much. Okay, can I, can I do an investigation? Yeah, uh, anywhere specific you want to investigate or just in general throughout the entire room. Can you give me a rundown of what's in there again? Yeah, so right through the curtain, right in front of you is her bed. At the foot of the bed is a chest. Off to your left, you have a wardrobe. Um, it's probably double your height as a gnome. And then next to either side of her bed at the top of the room, she has nightstands. Um, other than that, there isn't right. much. Maybe a bookshelf, I think too. I'll start with nightstands, then. Okay. Yeah, so roll investigation. Ooh, I got a crit 20 on that, plus 5, so 25. Is that our um, first net 20 of the campaign? I think that is. I think so. Congratulations! You got a golden star. <laughs> so, with that, um, yeah, you walk over, you open up the nightstand, start digging through. You wouldn't see anything you would consider a strange vial. There's some potions that you would recognize um, being an artificer. Well, maybe not being an artificer, but there are potions that seem to be like the standard healing potions. There's other random potions that don't seem very strange to you. Um, also, there is a bag full of gold. Um, <laughs> that's obviously that. where she keeps her money for the night. <laughs> And uh, just a couple of papers that would seem, if you start reading them, to be kind of a journal of sorts. She's written down ideas and thoughts she had throughout the day on it. Does there any, like, uh, pieces of paper that kind of tell a little bit about, like, maybe what she's been going through, or, like, when she started seeing symptoms, or... Anything like that? Oh yeah, she kept very detailed notes of that. Um, she probably has... Uh, the first date that mentions anything about it is probably three weeks prior to the date. Um, you know, she mentions Ergon having come in, he seems strange, has small blue veins on his hands, um, moves with a slight lethargy, and she bought, she lists the items again. Um, then she'd probably go about a week later, she starts noticing that she has the blue veins on her hands, um, and they're starting to crawl up her, her forearms. What does she grab? She starts feeling, she starts feeling slow around that time, and as the days go by, she can notice daily the veins are inching and growing um, closer and closer towards her, her head everything, they all start hands and feet, and they grow close, closer and closer to, she would have noted down her brain, like they're trying to, to infiltrate and corrupt, is what she would have had in her notes. So She's, at this point, what I kind of start to piece together, that is probably at least one of the items that was given to her, or she bought from her. Oh yeah, she, she probably would have noted that in there too, she would think, um, she would note down, probably, she knows Ergon talks to a lot of people on her way to her and no one else seems to have this affliction that she has. Um, so she would note down she believes it was from something that she got from, from him. So you know for sure that just, at least she believes that it was from one of the items that he gave her. Yeah. I'm going to call over 12 thorns again. You're like, hey. Uh, yes. Uh, I have uh, I have a feeling that it might be something or one of these trinkets or maybe that dagger that could be the cause of something. So if you happen to find anything that might seem like any of these, make sure you keep keep it from a, avoid from touching your skin. Try not to touch it for too long or grab it with some kind of cloth. And we will see what it does. All right. Uh, I'm going to go over to the woman and uh, can I check to see if she has like any wounds, like where she might have been cut? 
Yeah, so you look towards the woman, and it's clear that she is gone. She has began reaching an arm up, pointing towards the bedroom where she came from, but she is now nothing more than a statue of ice. Oh, that's so sad. Frozen in the sitting position that it's you like, led her to. It's like gone on there isn't much you can glean from the ice. It seems pretty solid, and it's really hard to pick out many details like that. Um, After uh, hesitating for a moment and looking really uh, uncomfortable with what he's about to do, uh, I'm gonna go over and see. So is she like pointing? Does he have one finger out pointing? It's not quite pointing. It's like the fist is kind of uncurling. And her arm is kind of like barely starting to inch its way away from her body towards towards the room that Tiva walked into. Okay, I'm going to wincing and closing my eyes. I'm gonna grab one of the fingers and try and snap it off. Ooh, oh, man. That's gross. Okay, uh, roll a s- roll the strength check. Uh, okay, yeah. So you grab a finger, you start pulling on it, um, nothing happens. You start kind of hitting it a little bit lightly, not trying to do too much. Um, nothing happens, and she's not even really shifting too much. Um, it's pretty solid. And as you start knocking on this, um, you do hear the door open from behind you, and... <laughs> And someone walks in and says, We didn't expect anyone to be here this time of night. Well, this, this time of day. It's probably getting closer to evening now. The sun's starting to go down. It's getting a little dark. And then with that, we'll jump back real quick over to the other group who is getting to the cabin right now. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. I've actually never played a split party before. It's interesting. Yeah, we kind of suck yeah. at staying together. <laughs> um, we'll so did we arrive where are we Yeah, now? you, so all of you guys, um, Baylor and Portia, you see the cabin for the first time. It is, like Kook said, um, glowing in the night. Now it's dark. The sun's definitely gone down where you guys are at. Um, it's glowing. You can see light coming out of every single hole Every single split in the wood, there's just light pouring out, and there is a wild plume of smoke pouring from the chimney. Oh, Oh. Um, I go over, so what do I see? Wait, Coog did something, you cut out a little bit there. Yeah, I did. There you go. So, yeah, I, I went up to the, I just closed the stream, that's all I did. It wasn't oh. too much bandwidth. But, but, oh. I, uh, I go up to the front door, I knock again, and I wait. If I don't hear anything, I'm going to try and open that door. Okay, yeah. So you knock. Anyone coming to the door. You knock. No one answers. Um, definitely still just the padding of animal paws. They get closer to the door. Um, that's it. No one wants to say anything from inside. If there is someone inside. Do I, I try the door? Does it open or is it locked? It is locked. Uh, I peek. Oh. Is there a window? Okay, let's go. Okay. There is a window. Can They're I all barred in? and shuttered. Mm. So. They're all barred and shuttered. I knock on the window. Same. You would hear one set of paws scampering over towards the window. But we're, we're at the antique shop, is that right? No, you guys are at the cabin, which you've now guessed is Tolgi's cabin. Alright, is are we are we strong enough to break the door down? You can definitely try to. I'm trying to hit it, and then yeah, I'm like, Coog, help me get this door down! Okay, so if you, like, kick the door once, um, you're going to hear growling from the other side of the door, and a uh, woman's voice, really gruff. Slow again. Get 
what do you want? Um, we think this is Tolgi, right? Yeah. Or, are you Tolgi? What's it to ya? Are you or are you not? We are here to help. <laughs> you may be in danger. Please open the door. It's just, I don't need no help. Lady, you're gonna die. <laughs> she wouldn't. She wouldn't respond again. Okay, she's dead. Uh, she's dead. Um, dead. I'm gonna cast detect poison on disease and disease, not as a ritual this time. So, use a spell slot to try and detect, see if she is sick. Um, does that go through walls? Um, the spell can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, then she of lead, or three feet of wood. Okay. Or dirt. Easy. So. Then, yeah. So you see, with this one, very bright blue, um, kind of strange, because usually it's just like, with the last group, it's just, you know it's there, but this one you do see through the door, there is a bright, bright, vibrant blue aura, just... Straight through the door. All right, Braylor's gonna try and knock the door down. And then. Okay. Um, make an attack. Style. Roll. All right. Um, acrobatics or just like strength. Uh, just roll a d twenty for an attack. You're attacking the door. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh gosh, I rolled a two. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. You better die. So. Uh, I would say you swing um, with your bow staff. You try to take a quick jab, um, but you kind of just glance off the door frame where it's a bit too stiff to do any damage. Kind of scratch it a bit. <laughs> Our stinking Goliath made a fool of himself. <laughs> yeah. Please, you are very sick. I can sense it. Okay. I may be able to help you. She, there's no response again, and Kugi said you want to try again? Is there any gaps, is there any gaps like around the door frame that, that I can peek through? Yeah, there's probably some slits and gaps and stuff you can, you can stare through. Okay, I want to find, just like, I'm assuming that this, this is probably just like a bolt, like a big old, big old handle that locks this door. I just want to find that, and I'm going to stick my dagger through the door, and I'm just going to pick it up and see if I can open the door. Okay. Um, I want you to make a slide of hand, and then also add your strength modifier. My strength modifier, is this second, my strength yeah. modifier is plus three, so I'll roll 1d20, that's three, roll higher than a two. Fourteen? Fourteen. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you, you look through... Uh, the door, there's some slits. You do see the beam that is there. You take a dagger out, you jam it through that slit. You saw it, and you just start lifting and wedging it. Eventually, it does fall loose um, with a loud on the door, um, on the ground. But you do hear very ferocious growling coming from the other side of the door at this point. And the lady says, don't come in here. Do I know Tolgi at all? No, you wouldn't Whoa. have met her. I wouldn't have met her at all? Mm. Interesting. Um, so what is the growling? Do you think it's like a bear or something? Not a bear. A sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> a wolf. A bear. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys would you guys would probably recognize that most of you have spent your life in the woods and you would you recognize a wolf's growl. It's two wolves. Oh, do I still have animal friendship? <laughs> that would be very helpful if you did. I, could, I had an animal friendship! <laughs> <laughs> I just got really excited, a little overexcited. All right, ah, I'm about to cast animal friendship. Okay. There you go. Just like if I have to, oh, I think it, it's a line of sight thing. Mm. Um, I think. Like, so. Or is it a touch? I have it. Let's see. Animal friendship, oh, thirty foot range. All right. We're good. Cool. So I want to just.
just like open the door enough to see or to see if I have to see the wolf, then I'm cast out of friendship. And roll D20 is 17. Um, I think this is on the wolves. They have to save. Uh, can you target multiple, or is it just is it one? It's my only if we cast is a level two, and we don't have level two spells yet. Okay, so you can cast it on one. one of the wolves when with the door creaked open a little bit. Once you open the door, the wolves are like, they're not gonna jump on you. Um, they're not even gonna try to jump on the door or anything if you're just bracing it right there. But they are growling. You can see one of them, um, and you cast animal friendship and the wolf. Definitely doesn't save against the wisdom saving throw. So yeah, he he kind of like he just stops barking, kind of starts wagging his tail, um, looking up at you expectantly. Oh my yeah. gosh, I want to have a wolf. So now I'm just like letting it know, like we mean absolutely no harm, and anyway. But it's still not happy, to. but that's fine. If we have to, you know, we're going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. At that point, um, she would, she would sure. say out again, leave, and then you'd hear, Ira, come. And the wolf that you just did animal friendship on looks at you. And then turns around and walks back um, towards where the voice is coming from. Is it and the other one, she yells, Jiro, guard. And he keeps growling and gets right in front of you. And she, she yells out, if you don't leave, I'll sick him on you. You're muted. gonna happen I think this lady's gonna die really so yeah. can I uh, run a perception percep perceptive perce perception perception check what are you trying to perceive uh, if I see anything in the, in the room that is um, important to yeah. her being sick if you look through a crack on the door or something yeah you can roll a perception and you can see yeah, yeah I'm gonna do that okay, roll perception Raylor's going to raise his shield up and try to advance into the room. Okay. Um, I to give her more... Yeah. yeah, to give her more line of sight. I got a four. Yes. A four. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so, Portia, you look into the room, but kind of like the wolf's in the way, and kind of Braylor, Baylor and Coog are just kind of like both crowding the door, so it's kind of hard to see. You can't see anything. Um, Baylor, as you push through the door, um, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. And um, also, so it, yeah. If it's uh, directed just towards me, since yes. I have the shield master feet, um, I get to add my shields um, AC to my dex saving throw. Okay. So You're good. If it's just going for me, then okay, cool. Yeah, just for you. And uh, you also hear her yell from the back of the room, sit. Just, she yells out a command to the wolf, and the wolf starts to attack. And I need you both, all three, to roll initiative after we hear Baylor's. Um, yeah, I rolled uh, seven total. Seven total? I'm rolling very low. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of push through the. Push through. And with the wolf kind of jumping up on you, you don't notice there are two crossbow bolts that come from the uh, left side of the entrance. And you take six damage, piercing. Okay. And then, yeah, this you're kind of just in between the rest of the party, the wolf, and you see in the back of the room, um, Tolgi sitting on a chair 
right in front, in between two fires. One, she made a makeshift fire pit in front of an actual hearth that's behind her, and she's just sitting, same thing, blue veins crawling up her arms, not quite as bad as Pelk was, but veins up to her shoulders starting to crawl up her neck, and she's slowly trying to get out of her chair and draw two daggers from her side. Um, and now, that's two hours. That's the that's the that's the session for the night. Sadly, unless you guys really want to keep going, but yeah, same. I, I'll let you guys decide if you want to, but we that's the two hours. So yeah, I don't think I rolled higher than a ten that whole time. Yeah, that was a painful that was a painful session for you and your dice rolls. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Whatever. Cause yeah, I rolled a nine total for my initiative as well. So um, there you go. But oh, do you want me to roll my initiative right now or next um, time? You can roll now if you want. I'll keep track of them. Can or I roll now and then next time if I don't like. I mean, I'd no. be fine re-rolling it next session yeah. too. Yeah. You know? We'll just roll next session. It's best. Okay. Um, yeah. maybe you can get a little bit better. Bad luck tonight. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah, and uh, now it seems like we've got to do the drawing for what? What? Long it is for people to die after they get contaminated. You probably don't. Uh, Portia and Baylor and Coog probably do not. Uh, Teagle, you Mm -hmm. from the journal entries you read, you can probably tell it's for her. It was probably three and a half weeks before she died from it. Um, I don't know if you would have told that to Twelve Thorns or not, but. Uh, the last thing we got to do tonight before we end is the drawing for the guest player, because we will have a guest player. Now, definitely not next time, um, but should be two sessions from now. In a month, right? About a month, we'll have our first guest player showing up. Um, sadly, I did not do the full drawing like I wanted to. I was going to put it up so everyone can see. Boom, flashing lights. Here's the name. This is who it is. Don't have that. So we're actually just doing a quick pick a number between 1 and 41 from Google. And I have numbers for everyone, and we'll see who gets it. I got 49. I'm going to guess. What's the number one? No, you you haven't guessing. It's a pick a random number. I know, but I'm going to guess. Oh, you want to guess a number? Yeah. It's it's 1 through 41. 32. 51. Does, does anyone have a 51? 31. 31. 31. I'm doing a random number on generator. Um, on 25. Run and 41. 41. Pick a random number between 1 and 41. Number generator and 18. Which means that our guest player is. Ba ba ba. Give me a second to get to my notes. <laughs> guest player for two sessions from now is. Um. Make sure you count right. Yeah. While he's doing that, uh, for ne- our next session, um, Gilbert Shearer. Nice. So if Gilbert <laughs> Shearer is watching, um, that's awesome. But I don't know if anyone's watching anymore. I will also just yeah. contact you guys. I'll contact Gilbert Shearer, talk to him about playing. If he can't play, um, I will get in contact with the next random number, and we'll go from there. So nice. Gilbert yeah, Shearer. Great. You're going to be able to join this mess that yeah. you're making. And we'll crush your dice rolls for you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 
So next time we start up with a fight for you three and the other two unknown. Oh man, be a very slow fight. Yep, and then un unknown um, people entering into Pelk's curiosities late at night. We'll see what happens there as well. So cool. see y'all later next time. We got to figure out exactly when we are going to be doing that. Um, still. I think there's there's some conflicts of scheduling, so we'll talk about it through Discord now. We're using Discord instead of Facebook because it's better. So, yeah. We'll keep you updated. Cool. All right. See you all next time. Bye. Uh, thanks everyone in the future for watching or listening. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I hope it works this time. We'll see. We will see. Stop streaming now. Goodbye.